Hi, my name is uh, Tim Ko. I'm delighted for the opportunity to talk to you about a topics on uh, delay system analysis using queuing theory. And um, the, the first question is, why do we have to look at queuing theory? So let's start looking at from, okay, this is from our slides. And the, why do we study queuing or delay systems? Is helping to understand the designs and the performance of telecom networks. Example of this in a, in a modern context is the necessary buffer size in routers before packets can be lost. Uh, the other one is uh, computer systems. The number of interfaces are required in a, in a, in a particular process. And also help to answer some everyday situations, something like call centers. So the manager of call centers have to know on average how long the customers wait in online before, before someone could uh, take care of him. And the other one is in the case of supermarket, how many counters are necessary in order the, uh, to satisfy the customers who are who may be waiting for a long time. So those are the reasons why we study queuing uh, delay systems. But there are many ways to study delay system. You can use in simulations, but a simple and very effective way is queuing theory. So let's look at it. So uh, that's the title, analysis delay system with queuing theories. We are basically look at three types of queue. The first one we look at is the MM1 queue. Okay. And the second one we look at is the uh, relaxing single, this one means the single server queue. Relax that for multiple server. So it become MN end. And the third one we look at relaxing the service time distribution from M into G. G mean general, which is any service time distributions. Now, those letter and numbers are a shorthand way to describing queuing systems. And the is becomes a rotation use, and this notation is normally known as handle rotations. Okay. So the, uh, the, uh, uh, the letters actually mean something. It means the, the first letter means the arrival process, what, mod, what distribution you can use to describing arrival process. And the second letter are describing the service time process. Okay. And this we have studied in the traffic characteristics. So we look at two main topics prior to our study and understanding of the queuing systems. And that are all delay systems. Okay, with this, we just move forward. The first one we look at is the main traffic characteristics for telephone network. I use the telephone networks or telecom networks all through this lecture series is because the first study on uh, queuing systems are done because of the introduction of telephone calls. So it's optimization of telephone networks. To do this, we have to know the subscriber behavior or the customer behavior and how customers make the call, of course, they are all individuals, and they are collectively at, at the telephone exchange, what do you, what can you say about how call is coming in? And the Poisson distribution is a very accurate way to describe a normal calling, pro, calling pro, um, profiles in a normal day. And the simple put, 
let me just write down a timelines. Okay, starting from zero and right up to time t. And you have the telephone call coming in in a irregular patterns, okay? So nobody know who is calling and they are not coordinated. So I just put our call. They come in irregular uh, fashions. And the Poisson distribution just give the probability they are a particular value of R call coming in during the time duration T. Now, it only come in one parameters, the average call arrival rate. Okay, number of call per unit time, in the case of call, call per second, call per minute. And the other interesting thing is the Poisson distribution is also known as a pure chance distributions. Uh, for, for simple reason, the Poisson distribution have the variance and the average mean, average, the ratio of variance, well, the variance equal to the mean, okay? So if you look at the, the actual Poisson distributions, it goes something like this. This is a pictorial way to um, describe a Poisson distribution. It's a, in discrete, it's a discrete number, okay? Uh, in this case, the lambda t is equal to three, okay? So you have the number, which is a number of call in the, into the uh, telephone system. In this case, it's zero. That value means no call coming in. And that has about 5% probability. And the maximum number of calls is probably around two or three. That has about 22% coming uh, of possibility that there's two or three calls in the network. Okay. Maybe a parameter or lambda t equal to three. It's a discrete value because you cannot have 1.5 call and the number of call, uh, the probability of higher number of call is reduced for this case on lambda t equal to three. So just a graphical way for you to understand the Poisson distributions. The other thing of interest is the, is the, uh, uh, which I forget to tell you, is the interval times. The interval times of each call, we will talk about that later on, okay? So the interval time follow, in fact, a negative exponential functions. So this is uh, another parameter of importance to us, how long the customer is talking on average. And this is followed by uh, what we call a telephone call holding time. And it follow, it, it, in fact, after many years of measurements, we seem to know the behavior of customers follow a negative exponential. So, so they talk for, they've talked for, uh, some talk long, some talk short, but overall, if you have a large number of calls, they follow what they call negative exponential uh, per, uh, uh, functions. So I'll give you just give a look of the negative exponential functions. It has shapes like this. The shapes depending on the uh, parameters or the values. Okay. So the um, it's a continuous distribution. So basically, it show you the uh, the uh, probability density functions values or particular values or, or value of call. For example, if you talk for one point five minutes, so the what's the probability that happens? Okay, one point five minutes around here. So you can calculate the probability of one point five, but. In a contingent function, um, power density function, you, you cannot say 1.5, you can be 1.4 uh, to 1.6 was the probability that core duration is, is in that range, 
Okay. So let's go back to the last slides, which is we say the core holding time is um, follow, uh, can be dis accurately described by a negative exponential functions. And the average, that's the parameter mu, mu is the departure rate or service rate, number of core you can service per unit time because of the duration. If you have on average three minutes of, uh, uh, three minutes uh, average holding time, core talking time, you probably can do 20 core per minute, okay? So, I mean, average the rate, and you can have the average service time of one over mu. There's another story to tell. Remember what I told you about Poisson arrival process? There's an inter-arrival time. The, uh, if, it's a, if it's a Poisson arrival process, it will give rise to a negative exponential inter-arrival time. The reverse is also true. So if you have a negative, negative exponential inter-arrival time, it must be a Poisson process. Okay, and this tell you uh, more details on how the, to, to understand the idea. Okay, so let's move a little bit forward. And the last thing we look at is the traffic intensity, which is a very simple concept. It's just simply to say how busy the, the network is. So how many calls coming in during one average service time, okay? So lambda multiplied by one over mu, this is average service time, is the traffic intensity. Now, the only thing interesting is, is traffic intensity is uh, unitless, no unit parameters. Um, but we put an artificial parameter, Erlang, named after AK Erlang. We'll say something more about AK later on, okay? So Erlang have, uh, Regard as a pioneer for queuing system, pioneer for teletraffic engineering, and uh, so uh, we will see it again sometime later. So the next one we talk about candle rotation. Remember, I told you what we are studying. In fact, basically, is the variation of an M M M one Q. Now, the first letter means the arrival process. If it's a Poisson distribution, it is known as the Markovian, which is have a Poisson arrival process. It's a negative exponential interval time, and also known as a pure chance. The other, other arrival, yes, they are. The regular pattern is like the train going to the platform every five minutes, every 20 minutes. So it's a regular pattern, the deterministics, and they are irregular patterns, but we know some parameters of that. It's called general, okay? So the other second M, so that is the first M, the first letter. The second letter is the service time distributions. And it can be also negative exponential, as in the case of telephone call, okay? And the number of server can be just one or many. And this picture here is a single server queue, okay? And the other thing, interesting thing is the, the uh, waiting space, the queue size is, well, the, the, uh, uh, the number of queue available is very large, okay? So we say it's infinite, infinite, uh, 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 Assumption, the default value is infinite. The customer size is also the by default infinite. Okay, those are these uh, rotation. We will look at MM1, MMN, multiple server, and MG1, where G means the service time is, is not specific, specific to negative exponential, but it can be described by some parameters. So the next one we look at, as I said, so we have gone through that. And this is the picture 
uh, I will look at the results uh, of the of the queue and then give you some application. The main reason to do this is to give you some motivation on uh, on uh, what what is uh, uh, what is important. How you use it. If, how you use the theory. And then the first one we look at is MM1Q. As I mentioned, there's only single server and they are infinite number of, uh, infinite number of, uh, infinite number of waiting space. So the Q space, uh, space is not limited. Okay, so with that, the arrival process can be used as a lambda, and the departure process is mu. Okay, and you can basically describe the queues in two different portions. The first one is the queue, okay. And you can describe it by number of jobs in the queue. And also the waiting time in the queue. Okay, you can also do the same for the server, but we know the, because we know the, the parameters. The number of jobs in the server is n server is equal to one uh, lambda over q mu. The average waiting time in the server is given by uh, one over mu. Okay, now those two just add together will give you what we call a system. All right, with that specification we now go into the results the result of the n sys which is this one here is given by a simple term lambda over mu minus lambda and the row is lambda over uh, is lambda over mu the average waiting time in the system is is given by this average waiting time in the queue is given by this term and the last term is average number of jobs in the queue. Okay, so the next one we talk about, we look at is on the particular type of uh, how do we use the theories? Okay, the, we use example of a multiplexer. What's a multiplexer? Basically you go something like this. You have a multiplexer here. and the outgoing lines, and you have several terminal connect to it. In this case, example here, I have a, a specified 10 terminals. Okay, so one to 10. So jobs come in into the multiplexer, packet come into the multiplexer, and they are buffer inside the multiplexer to store those packets. And then they wait for the term to send out, okay? So data arriving into multiplexer according to a Poisson process with average of 30 packets per second from turn 10 terminals. So altogether, so there are 30 packets per second coming from turn terminal. The packet length are measured and found to be on average 120 bytes long. With the uh, outgoing line of 64 kilobit per second, So we want to know how long the customers, or the packets have to wait in the buffer. Okay, so that's what we want to know. Okay, so in fact, the results tell you they are depart. If you know the uh, lambda over, if you know lambda and you know mu, then you know everything from these equations here. So what's lambda? It's very simple: thirty packet per second, and the mu one over mu is. 120 bytes, so eight, uh, eight bits multiplied by eight bit per byte, and then divide by 64. It turned out to be about 15 milliseconds. So you take on average 15 milliseconds to send out a packet. 
Now the departure rate is then turn to about 66 packet per second. Okay, so lambda over mu is only 45%. That means the multiplexer or the line is busy 45% of the time. With that, the given the relationship, we have 12 millisecond waiting time. So it's a bit of long waiting time, given the fact we own 45% utilization. But if you increase utilization to a much higher incoming uh, rate, then the departure, uh, the waiting time will be much longer. Okay, so let's with that, let's go into the theory behind how we obtain it. In fact, it's quite simple. Okay, so uh, basically we have to understand one thing, that's the Markov chain. Markov chain is one transition at a time, named after math the Russian mathematician Markov. And um, the transition basically is changing the state, okay? So what's the state mean? That state zero means they are, the system is empty. There are no one, there are no one in the supermarket or in the network. One means the single server, because the single server, the one means the one packet are uh, in uh, and they are you go into the server okay so there's one person one packet in the in in the system two means they are one in the server and one waiting in the queue and so that is the state and what about the transition the transition the park of chain means they are transitioned only over one stage at a time zero to one, one to two. You cannot have zero to two. So that is the situation, the, the, the time situation is, uh, is not important. And what is important is change of state. So if you, you could have zero to one, take a while, and then one suddenly going to two very quickly. That's possible but it's only one transition at a time. The other thing of interest is of the transition rate. In here on the top is arrival rate, lambda, which is constants. And at the bottom is the departure rate, which is mu, which is constant. The reason why this is constant, because it's a single server. If you look at multiple server, the, the, the uh, departure rate is state dependent. More interesting is the uh, iterative re relationship between each state. Example, if I draw a line here and moving forward probability is given by lambda P1, okay? Moving backward probability is given by mu P2. Now, one of the uh, specific requirements for Markov chain is when it's only the work or only valid when the um, when moving forward and moving backward are equilibrium. So what I mean is if moving forward is much bigger than moving backward, what will happen is the, 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 the system will force into infinite waiting time, the infinite large number of jobs are uh, accumulate in the system. So the waiting time will be very long. And the other direction is when it's going backwards is larger, much larger than forward, what would happen is then the, the system is always empty or almost always empty. So the equilibrium idea is necessary for a steady state solution. So let's move forward. This idea is describing here where the where you have this uh, in a general term 
and uh, I'm using the I lambda P1 equal to mu P2. So this is the general term we can describe in this. Okay, so you can always express P I plus one, whatever I is, in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the previous state. Example, what we have before is this P of two equal to lambda over mu of P of one. Okay, so that is this state here. So a particular example. So if you know the last stage, then you know every state values. So basically, if you know the P0, you know P0, you know P1. If you know P1, you know P2, because you know what lambda over mu is, okay? And one sp specific requirement is lambda over mu has to be smaller than one. What happens with lambda over mu bigger than one? That means lambda is bigger than mu. That means more job coming in before you can process the, the jobs uh, uh, your, by the single server. And that will happen, that means the system will not be steady. That means a growing job waiting in the queue. Okay, so even with the specification row less than one, you still have to know one piece of information. The piece of information, what about P0? How do you get P0? So if you know P0, you know P1. If you know P1, you know P2. So, but in particular, you need to know what P0 is. So we use a normalization, which is uh, basically say all the probability add together must be equal to one. So P0 plus P1 plus P2 plus P3 up to P infinity is equal to one. Now, we just put the relationship of rho i P0, which is this term here, okay, for i equal to zero, then when they add together, must be equal to one. Now, if you notice, this term is the ge uh, geometri geometrical infinite series, and that is that term is equal to one over rho. So that term is equal to one over rho, where rho is lambda over mu. Okay, from that, then it's very simple to derive P0 is this. So once you know P0, then you know every state probability, which is this value here. The other thing is we want to know about the number of job in the system. So, so one time zero time P0 plus one time P1, two time P2, then that's the average number of job in the system. And then that is expressed by another, uh, another ge geographical, uh, geometrical uh, infinite series, which is this one here. And it turns out this one is equal to rho one minus rho square. Okay. And then the, uh, and that cancel out. And then you have this equation, rho over one minus rho. So we know, once we know the specification of PI, we can calculate ANSYS. And then we can also move forward and look at, we can calculate the uh, average. Um, we can also calculate the uh, waiting time in the system, as I mentioned before, waiting time in, of the system, which is consists of the queue and the server. We know the server time we spend on average in there. Okay, so we can calculate from knowing the WCs, we can calculate waiting time in the queue. Now, how do we calculate WCs once we know NCs? 
Then you're using what we know as little formula in, meth in queuing theory. Little formula is basically is for any queue. All they, all they said is number of jobs in the, in the queue or in the system are lambda times the waiting time. Okay, so in the case of n sys, and you, if you know w sys, then you can calculate n sys by knowing the, uh, by just multiply by, uh, just multiply by lambda. So let's go back to n sys. n sys is, we have just calculated, is lambda over mu minus lambda, okay? So if you put that lambda over uh, mu minus lambda, and and then uh, and then divide by uh, 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 and then multiply multiply by lambda, and you get sorry. Uh, if you have w, if you know n sys, let me just steady. If I'm if you, if you know n, if you know n sys, which is lambda over mu minus lambda, and you can calculate w sys, the waiting time in the system, by just divide that by lambda, which is this value here. And then if you know waiting time in the system minus the average wait time you spend in the server, that is the waiting time in the queue. Okay, and if you know the waiting time in the queue, then you're using the earning loss little formula again for the queuing time, and then you can calculate the number of jobs on average in the queue. So this is uh, 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 the theory behind MM1. is not simple, but it's not difficult either. Okay, so we can move forward once we know that. One more result we can give you, which is important in many uh, operation research or in any uh, questions, the manager wants to know, what's the probability my customer have to wait for a certain time or more than a certain time? Example, is the call center manager want to know how long my customer have to wait on average? What's the probability that the customers have to wait for more than five minutes. Okay, so the queuing theory also gives rise to this relationship, the probability, the, the waiting time in the system is longer than particular value t, five minutes, for example, you're given by this negative exponential functions. So this is an important result, but I won't, do, I won't look at it in details. So that is additional information you might want to know. The next one I want to look at is the Erlang delay formula. It's named after A.K. Erlang because his work in this area. And this is the, this is the picture I like. It's that look like me waiting, uh, buying things at the supermarket. There is me. And uh, how, uh, in this case, there's three counters open and there's only one single queue. So the N number the mo is, not, is not single server, but three servers, okay? So there's one queue and I go in and how on average, I want to know how long I have to wait, okay? So the idea is the first come first serve. So you, the, the customer go into the counter and then uh, uh, go into the queue and wait for the counter to, to be, uh, 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 to be empty and then move forward. Okay, so that is the idea about uh, the early and delay formula. Okay, before I look into more detail about the early and delay formula, just a little bit of. Uh, introductions. Uh, as I told you before, A.K. Erlang was regarded or still regarded as the pioneer for 
shadow traffic engineering and queuing theory. And basically I have three degree of separation with AKMA. So let me introduce a picture for you. Okay, this is the uh, me, young, much younger me. And uh, this is my friend, uh, Willie Everson. And we have to pay tribute to uh, A.K. Erlang and visit his grave in Copenhagen. Now, just a background, K.K. was working in the Copenhagen Telephone Company and the network became very busy. And um, the manager wanted to know how many counters at the time you have to use manually switching, how many counters are necessary in order to reduce the number of uh, lost call because every call is charged and that you have to pay for it. So he derived the Erlang loss formula and then later work on Erlang delay formula. So that is me and really which I have so paper uh, I have uh, we have worked on some research paper and that is uh, AK. Now if you look at AK, this is his grave. It's very common to have grave at that time for the Danish people to share between the family. So basically AK, which born in 78 and died in 29. Okay, so which is about the average age at the time, 50, around 50s. And he shared the grave with uh, his sisters and also his brother and his sister-in-law. Now, that, that great, and uh, I have three degrees of separation with AK because really, really is a supervisor, really supervisor has been working when he was a younger man with AK Erlen in the same telephone company. So AK, really supervisor, really, and then me. So there's three degree of professional separation between us. Oh, in the same, it's something interesting. In the same graveyard, which is not a big graveyard, but it's close to the center of uh, Copenhagen, is another interesting grave, another interesting Danish man. His name is, uh, all of you probably heard of, Hans Christian Andersen. He writes story books for children. His most well-known one is um, Little Mermaid, okay? And the other one of knowns is uh, The Emperor's New Clothes. And his, uh, uh, Christian Anderson, Hans Christian Anderson's grave is more often visited by uh, visitors. It become quite a, quite a, a tourist attraction. And uh, in, in his grave, which we we'll also visit at, the t at that same date, there's flowers, there are babies' toy or children's toy put on uh, in, in, in his gravestones. So, and um, in fact, Copenhagen's have uh, the main street is named after him. It's called H.C. Anderson Boulevard. Okay, that is the story of the relationship between uh, the um, AK. Okay, let's get back to our work. I mean, that small diversion. And uh, the work is now, basically we look at details about Erlang delay formula, which is given by the MMNQ. N now means multiple server. In this example here, it's three server. So what happened? when N, uh, in the case of delay system using N server, what is the probability of delay? What is the average delay time? What's the average drop in the queue? So those are the information you wish to know. So the idea is still the same uh, exponential uh, interarrival time exponential service time and this time you have uh, the 
n server. So n could be in, in the example of three or, or any other values. And there's infinite buffer size, okay. So the only difference, this picture, if the last one, mm1q, is the, uh, the, 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 the same, this is common. Let's look at what's common. Lambda remain, remain constant. Okay. But what's not common is the departure rate are state dependence. Okay. So when, when you state two, you're two mu. When you state one, you're one mu. When state three, there's three mu. Okay. N state, there's N mu. Okay. And then N plus one, you state with N mu. So once you see N, the, the same departure rate n mu apply to every one of those states. So basically, why, uh, how's that reason? What's the reason for the change of state? The, I'll just give a one simple example. So if the supermarket you have only one counter open, and with one counter, it can on average serve about 12 customer per hour. But then the manager see there's a long queue waiting. So they opened another us, another counter to, to, to activate. And then you have two counters. In that case, the two counters instead can do all the job instead of just 12 cu customer per hour can do 24. So that is the reason for two times the uh, initial, the first one job um, uh, uh, departure or service rate, okay? So there's a simple idea. So let's look at the results of this happen. So this is the probability. This is the probability of a call is being delayed. And basically it's very simple, okay? Now this row is, if you know the if you know the value of uh, uh, I'm just looking at if you look this is the relationship okay and rho in this case is lambda over mu okay divide by number of server so each row means the server for each individual server utilization how often they are busy okay and what about this term this term is called earning loss formula is one over en is given by en of a is given by this relationship why do we specify in terms of the law delay probability in the loss uh, loss uh, um, probability in, they are different there are two different systems in the case of loss probability they are the server the waiting space is zero so there are no queue for a call coming in and find all the servers busy. They just leave the system. That's early and loss formula. In the case of early and delay formula, when jobs, when all the servers are busy, it just wait and wait for its turn to get service. Now, why do then, there are two entirely different systems we're looking at. Now, why do we express DN of A in terms of Erlang loss formula, simply because they are calculators. You can put n to a, and then you give you the uh, probability of loss e n of a. Okay. Of course, you can just do the simple calculation yourself using these expressions. So, d n of a is a probability that a call coming in and find all end servers are busy, and so is waiting in the queue. The queue may have one or more jobs waiting. 
okay, but he will be go the end of that queue. So that is a probability a call is delayed. The average queue length is given by this simple relations again. All right, so with that, I move forward. Look at the applications. In this case, you have n is equal to five. Okay. And then we have uh, six core, six core per, six core per second, lambda. And then we have uh, the average waiting time is two third of a second. So that is one over mu equal two third of a second plus average service time. And therefore rho is given by 80%. That means the, each server are busy 80% of the time. With that information, then you can express the probability of loss with infinite, for Q with infinite waiting space. And that turned out to be about 55% which is quite big, quite, quite high. That means only 45% of the job, you get served straight away. The others just have to wait, okay? And the number of jobs in the systems, we have to wait. We, remember last one, we only give the NQ, but the number of job is the, at the Q plus those in the system, and that is given by lambda over mu, and you can add this up about 6.2 jobs. So 6.2 means there are four jobs on average in the server, plus there are 2.2 jobs waiting in the queue. Okay, so this is the result from MNN example one result of uh, MNN cubes. So with that, I will look at the theory, but I won't go through the theory because um, they are put there for simple reasons so you can look it up yourself. The only difference between these uh, concepts with, with MN1 cube is because of multiple server. So in fact, the jobs are divided into two parts. One is before the number of jobs uh, become n and a number of jobs greater than n. Okay, with that in mind, I will move forward and skip the theory of m n n q. Okay, so there's only four slides. If you're interested, you will be you, you're happy to go through it. Now I will go to the last topics for today. Remember we do an MM1Q. This time you look at a fact that is not M. So the service time is not negatively exponential distributed. It's anything. But you know something about that anything. Okay, so arrival is still M a negative exponential uh, into arrival time, Poisson distributions, but the service time is no longer negative exponential. So we relax that um, requirements. And what we know about the general is we know the first moment, we know the second moment of the service time. So we know basically the average, and the, and the uh, standard deviation or the variance of the service time. So with that two piece of information, we could calculate ba basically the, um, the, uh, 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 the waiting time in the queue. Okay, so just draw your attention to a particular change of rotation. Now the average service time is no longer one over mu, but we call X bar. 
average service time. And the second moment is x square bar, okay? So with that, we can just move forward one more time. I will give you the theory, the result and the theory and the application to it. So the result uh, given by a Ponentia kitchen formula, which is basically the, this relationship here. The waiting time in the queue for MG1Q, it's a single server, but uh, uh, arbitrary service time, but we know the first and second moments is given by this formula here, okay? And what about time you spend in this, in the server is one over mu or x bar. Okay. And this is the second moment, lambda x second moment, uh, to one minus rho, the utilization the single, is a single server. And the nq, the waiting time is lambda wq. So this is wq, this circle here. And the n cis is lambda w cis. Okay, so let's look at an example. These examples are related to the last example we have in MM1Q. Remember in the case of MM1Q, we have arrival specified as 30 packet Okay, I'll just move forward. We have 30 packets of lambda packet per second, the multiplexer example. And the service time is 50 milliseconds and the utilization is 45%. Okay, so we you know the first moment and the second moment of exponential distribution, then we can use uh, the MG1 uh, results, okay? So the first example is the example we already visited, but that time it derived directly using the iterative uh, process on the, the relationship between the weight, between the, uh, um, uh, derived directly and got the result. But this time we go indirectly through MG1Q. Now, the, uh, the second change is what happened if it's no longer exponential distributed, but a fixed pack size. In that case, if you know the first and second moment of a fixed size, then you can calculate the waiting time in the queue. So let's look at this example. In the first case, the second moment is given by, the, in the case of exponential distribution, given the first moment average square two times, and it turned out to be about this value, and using the waiting time in the queue for MM1Q is about 12 milliseconds. Okay, now let's change it. In the case of fixed size deterministics, fixed size, the second moment is smaller. It's only given by the average square, okay? And if you put that into relationship, then you have the average waiting time in the queue for MD1Q, okay? 6.136, okay? So the waiting time in the queue is much more smaller. Remember in that example that the, the average service time is 15 milliseconds. So the total time spent in the system, in the case of M, M1Q is the average total time spent in the system is uh, 12 plus 15, okay? In the case of MD1Q, the total time is, is only six plus 15, okay? So those are your milliseconds. Okay, so this is 
just come to the end of the um, study for well the, the talk on this delay analysis using queuing theory so so let's go to the last slides what have we learned we learned basically a pure chance arrival pure chance service time MMM and with single server. Okay. And we relax that into multiple server. And then the last one we learn is where there's a general service time, but we know the first and second moments. Okay. Now the question is are they accurate? Are they useful? Now, if the core arrival is pure chance or possible distribution. Then it's then and the service time is negative exponential, or if you know the second moment and first moment in the case of single server queue, then if assumption is true, it's accurate. And the result is simple. So the other way of doing uh, performance analysis, which is is doing a large number of simulations. And that takes a lot of time and effort. And, but this is, is a very simple way and derive a, 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 a closed form solution. Now, what about if the assumptions are incorrect or wrong? Then the result, of course, is inaccurate. But it still provide a very good reference for knowing what is the um, upper bound and all the lower bound in the case example. Of course, um, queuing system have de developed and take in those relaxation. So in, in example, if you don't have to have infinite uh, server, you don't, you don't have the infinite waiting space, you can be a finite waiting space and we still have result for a finite waiting space. So with that remarks, I uh, thank you very much for your attention and, uh, uh, and I really enjoyed doing this. Okay, thank you, bye-bye.